Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a huge weather pattern change that is going to be coming to the United States over the next seven days. And this is going to bring the return of severe weather to areas like the Central and Northern Plains, the Midwest, and perhaps the Ohio Valley as we go throughout the week. In addition to this, we are going to see a complete flip of temperatures where we are going to go from below average temperatures to above average temperatures across a large chunk of the country where record-breaking heat will be a possibility and then lastly we are going to be talking about the tropics as we could see a tropical storm or hurricane form in the Atlantic Ocean over the next seven to ten days and this could impact the United States now let's get right into what's happening across the United States right now in terms of the weather and overall right now it's pretty quiet for most of the United States we've had a lot of cloud cover across the southeast some showers some thunderstorms but nothing really that organized it's pretty typical summertime activity relatively quiet across the northeast back through most of the Great Plains but that'll change a little bit over the next few days as we do have increasing shower and thunderstorm activity across the northern plains had a few big supercells last night but nothing really got going last night I think over the next few days though we are going to start to see an increasing level of severe weather especially in the northern plains and eventually into the Midwest as mesoscale convective systems will be a possibility which basically means we are going to probably see several lines of thunderstorms between now and Friday. Now, one thing that's going to tell the story for this week in terms of the weather pattern is going to be the jet stream. We are going to see a very unique jet stream over the next several days that's going to be able to penetrate multiple severe weather events between Sunday all the way through the end of this week. So let's talk about that more in detail here, beginning with Saturday into Sunday. As of now, we do have a couple of features that I do want to point out. Overall, we have a low pressure system back over in Canada. This is going to bring a small little severe weather threat back over in northern Minnesota and North Dakota today. Overall, not a big threat, but there will be a chance for some damaging winds, hail, and maybe an isolated tornado or two. Also, in addition to this, we have a ridge that's been building back over in the southwest United States, just to the south of Arizona. And what this is going to do over the next few days is going to be very interesting, because as we go into Monday into Tuesday, this ridge is going to eventually move more to the east. What this is going to be able to create is a a northwesterly flow across the Midwest. And what that basically means is that we are going to be seeing showers and thunderstorms just kind of forming in this area, which could eventually turn into lines of thunderstorms. And the concern with this is that this could eventually penetrate into some sort of severe weather event that turns into, you know, significant damaging winds, hail, and maybe even tornadoes across parts of the northern and central plains and as well as the Midwest. So this could be similar to what we saw in mid-July, where there was a derecho that went across Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. It also might not be that way. We might just see a few lines of thunderstorms that don't really organize into something more substantial. So that's going to be something that we have to monitor over the next few days. The biggest thing with this is that it's going to be very hard to predict three plus days out what the severe weather is going to be in a, you know, a particular state. So be mindful of that. Be weather aware. Make sure that you're staying aware basically anytime between Sunday all the way up until Wednesday or Thursday as that looks like the primary focus of this northwesterly flow across the Midwest. Now, as we get closer to Wednesday and to Thursday, this ridge will continue to stay strong across the Southern Plains, and this should continue to allow for more lines of thunderstorms to eventually trickle into the Ohio Valley as we go into either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So be ready for that if you're in those areas. We could see a few lines of thunderstorms. It's not, again, a guarantee since mesoscale features like this are hard to predict, but it is a possibility. Once we go into the next weekend, we're going to eventually see that ridge retreat back over to the West, and this will eventually turn more than likely into a death ridge, which will eventually just lead to a pretty large heat wave across most of the United States. And then we'll be watching for the potential of a tropical system somewhere in the Southeast United States, which we're going to talk more details about that here in just a couple of minutes. Now, over the next couple of days, there are a few areas to watch for for some severe weather. Those Saturday and Sunday are not going to be the main days for severe weather, at least in my opinion. These are two days that you're going to be wanting to be mindful of if you're in the risk for severe weather. So beginning with today, we do have a slight risk back over in North Dakota and Minnesota. I do think the greatest risk for severe weather will actually probably be in Canada, but a couple of storms could get a little bit crazy here in that slight risk. We also have a marginal threat that goes all the way back down through areas in Utah and as well as Colorado, where the main concern will be damaging winds and hail in those areas. Again, the slight risk is mostly just driven by wind. We could also see some large hail. And then in addition to this, there is a low tornado risk. It's not zero. I 
do not think today's tornado risk is going to go that crazy, but if any storms are able to latch onto like an outflow boundary, for example, I wouldn't be surprised if we got some sort of photogenic tornado back over in either North Dakota or back over in Northwest Minnesota. You might be wondering, are we going to be live today? Probably not. It does not look that concerning in my opinion. Now, once we go into Sunday, the risk does grow a bit more, at least further to the east. We are going to see another marginal and slight risk for severe weather. The bullseye is in South Dakota, but we could see a few severe storms from Kansas back into parts of northwestern Wisconsin. Main concern will be wind. As of now, there is no tornado risk, or at least a very low tornado risk that is not outlined by the Storm Prediction Center. Now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather for both today and tomorrow. Overall, there will be plenty of showers and even downpours out there this morning. They will eventually turn more into thunderstorms as we go into the afternoon across parts of Minnesota. Again, we could see an isolated tornado or two out of this activity, but I do think the greatest risk will be north of Minnesota in Canada, so be ready for that. Again, a couple tornadoes will be a possibility today. Primary concern will still be damaging winds, and then by this evening, things are drying out a little bit, which could allow for a second round of thunderstorms to develop across North Dakota and maybe even back into northwestern Minnesota. Now, tomorrow is going to be a better example of what we're going to see from Sunday all the way until Wednesday, where we will have the chance for several lines and clusters of thunderstorms like this, for example, one in Nebraska, one in South and North Dakota, where the primary concern will be damaging winds, but we also could see some embedded tornadoes. And again, one of these sorts of lines, if something can get more organized sometime, I think between either Monday or Wednesday, we could end up seeing a derailed show. Now, I'm not saying it's a guarantee. I'm not saying it's going to be as bad as the one we saw, you know, back a couple weeks ago, but it is something that we are going to have to watch the potential for because we are in that time of year where this is a possibility, especially with something like a northwesterly flow in the jet stream. Now, here's what the instability looks like for the next several days. This is where all the storm fuel is going to be located, so this will give you a better idea of where I think the greatest threat for severe weather will be anytime between Sunday and as well as Wednesday. We kind of already touched on Sunday, so we'll hop into Monday first. I think overall on Monday, our better shot for severe weather will be anywhere from Minnesota back through Kansas, only shifting a bit further to the east as we go into Monday. Pretty similar area, though, to Sunday. Once we go into Tuesday and to Wednesday, we will probably start to see this reorganizing again across the central and northern plains. We could eventually see some sort of event trickle into the Midwest sometime Wednesday or Thursday, and that could lead to a more significant wind threat across those areas with maybe even a few tornadoes. And then once we go into Friday and to Saturday, the bulk of the storm fuel will start to drop to the south, and it will start to kind of fizzle out. And I think overall, our more concerning thing, I think, as we go into next weekend will be the potential for some sort of tropical storm, which we're going to talk more about again here in just a couple of minutes. Here's what the future radar looks like for the next few days. So again, as we go into Monday into Tuesday, we are probably going to continue to see a relatively active weather pattern with more than likely a couple of mesoscale convective systems, both Monday and Tuesday. This could impact areas in the Midwest on Monday. By Tuesday, we'll be talking about some storms again in the northern and central plains. Wouldn't even be surprised if something drops out of the Ohio Valley somewhere with some sort of line of thunderstorms. It's just that kind of system that we're dealing with. Once we go into Wednesday and as well as into Thursday, another line of storms possible somewhere in the Midwest. Again, where that happens is still very uncertain. Once we go into late Wednesday and Thursday, more storms more than likely in the Midwest where it will continue to stay active. And it'll probably stay active all the way through Friday into Saturday. And then things should start to overall relatively start to dwindle down and things should become a little bit calmer here across most of the United States. Now, the tropics are beginning to get interesting again. And as we go into more than likely a historic season when it comes to the hurricane season in general, we are probably going to see a lot more of this as we head into August, but we do have a 20% chance over the next seven days of development with a tropical wave that is still centered east of the Lesser Antilles. This is more than likely going to either go towards Florida or go into the Gulf of Mexico. So this is why it's concerning is that we could see this develop into some sort of tropical storm or hurricane, and it very well might impact the United States. Now, with that said, this is not set in stone. It is not a guarantee that we are going to see a hurricane or even a tropical storm, but it is something that we need to watch for very closely as it will be going towards the mainland of the United States by the beginning of August. I do want to show you three different computer models and what they are basically showing in terms of this tropical wave as we go into next weekend. And as of right now, the European model, which is one that has been very consistent with this being a tropical storm going towards the United States, is actually showing something different from 12 hours ago. So this is the most recent run. And as we go into Saturday into Sunday, notice how this is a tropical storm just east of Florida. And it takes a turn up the East Coast and actually kind of just avoids the United States. But it does intensify into a much more rather stronger 
stronger hurricane as it moves to the northeast. So that's one scenario. Now there's another scenario. The GFS model on the, on the most recent run shows this as just a little tropical depression or storm as we go into late next weekend and eventually by August 5th or 6th, it turns into something a bit stronger and a little bit stronger of a hurricane. Now this is the GFS model from a little before this most recent run and notice how it brings it to a, almost a major hurricane as it goes towards Texas and Louisiana. So basically what I'm saying is that there is a lot of uncertainty. No model has been consistent with anything at this point in terms of intensity or track. So I want to kind of remind you here, if you see something on social media that looks like a big hurricane going towards a certain state, obviously check and verify sources because at this point there's no certainty on where this will go. But what I will say is that you should be at least prepared that there might be something coming as we go into early August. Just make sure you're staying weather aware, no reason to panic or anything. Obviously we'll keep you posted with the latest on the Max Velocity channel as we get closer to this making some sort of impact if it does. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.